Hi, I'm Kay Walter. At Bergen Community College, we believe that all citizens need to be informed about the important issues that affect their lives. That's why we're proud to support the programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Wells Fargo, United Water, making the planet sustainable is the best job on earth, Bergen Community College, the Mental Health Association in New Jersey, Qualcare Inc., a local managed care company covering 750,000 New Jersey residents, the New Jersey Education Association, and by Kessler Foundation, changing the lives of people with disabilities. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by Commerce Magazine. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. I Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, Steve Adubato here at the Hackensack UMC Fitness and Wellness Center, powered by the Giants. You see folks are working out here, but working out is only part of the story here. It's fitness, it's wellness, it's taking care of yourself. Today we're here because it's a very important event um, hosted by the great Phil Sims from the New York Football Giants. Um, Phil Sims is retired from football, but he's still a great sportscaster with CBS. He's dedicated to wellness and fitness. We had a discussion about corporate wellness. We discussed also having a game plan for health. We discussed how this facility, how all sorts of folks in corporate life and business and frankly everyday people need a game plan for health. And so we talked to all sorts of people from the Giants, we talk to people in corporate life, we talk to people um, who are dedicating their lives to helping others get fit, deal with wellness, deal with nutrition, deal with behavioral health, just deal with improving the quality of their lives. So you're about to see those interviews with some terrific people dedicating to helping you getting fit, getting well, taking care of yourself, eating right. All of us need some help and you're gonna get some help right now for some really important people who care about you getting healthier. It is our honor to interview Phil Sims, who is not only the spokesperson for the Game Plan for Health uh, campaign up here at Hackensack, also, uh, um, you won a couple of Super Bowls for the football Giants, didn't you? That's what I hear. You know, listen, I'm getting old, I can't remember all those things, and that was another life. I, this life, I'm just trying to lead the life I got right now, that's hard enough. Yeah, let's talk about the uh, Game Plan for Health. Talk about the fact that recently, on the road, working hard as a sportscaster with CBS, in those hotels, tough to get good food, tough to work out, but you got it done. I am now. It was hard at first, you know, learning. I think what happens, especially when you travel a lot, you know, when you get tired, that's when you break down, start eating things, because it's comfort, and just like you would at home. So, but over the last, I'd say, four or five years, uh, I don't break down. I'll, I'll go hungry before I eat the wrong thing in a hotel, in an airport. Yeah, I usually don't even try to eat in airports because there's nothing good there for me. And um, it's worked out much better and it keeps my energy up. I feel better and um, it makes my work better also. You know, Phil and I were just talking about uh, this um, before we got on the air. A lot of folks will say, particularly on the corporate side, business side, hey, I'd love to work out. I'd love to be doing what Phil Sims is doing. I don't have the time. It just doesn't work in my schedule. Phil has a message. He's not may not say what he said. Yeah, uh, yeah, right. yeah. But 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 say what you really think. Yeah, it's it's well they're full of bull. That's what I'm saying. You know, no matter how many hours you work, I work a lot of hours too. But I'm gonna delegate my time and make sure somewhere, maybe before the day starts, but usually for me somewhere in the middle, I'm gonna take an hour and take that break and relieve the tension and work out, do whatever. And it's gonna be something when you're on the road, you're in hotels. It's not the best always, but you do what you can do, and um, it, it works, and it, it makes me feel better, and I'll tell you what, I, do, I enjoy my work uh, more after I've worked out. It just relieves that tension, the stress. I feel good about what I'm trying to do, and I enjoy my work more. How do you deal with the food part of it? Because clearly it is a lot easier to get food that's easier to get, cheaper to get, faster to get, but clearly it's rarely healthier. 
Well, there's many things to that. I think as I got older, you know, you all, we always think I'm not going to be that guy. I'll never get overweight and all that. And as I got older, I really didn't change my appetite. And I'd step on the scales. I go, well, I'm just getting heavier because I'm, you know, I've been working out. It's muscle. Yeah, it's muscle. <laughs> and then I think it is. It really is. One day, I, I was actually on TV, and I happened to look at a camera. And went, oh my gosh, look at me. You too. I've done that too. You've done it too. So you know, and the camera will kind of make you do things. You it'll make you straighten. Is it up. Ten or twenty pounds that we say it puts on us. Well, well, they say ten. I don't think that's an understatement. <laughs> it's more than that. You know it. And it is so. That kind of got me, and I said, okay, I'm going to quit fooling myself, and I'm going to start eating better, and I'm going to make sure I exercise when I'm supposed to. And I've always exercised. I think the eating part is where I let it get out of hand because I, I think for the first probably 15 to 20 years after I retired, I ate like I was a player. You know, when I was a player, I could eat anything. It, it was great because you work out so much when you're younger. But that's changed, and now, just like I said, my, my diet, I very seldom break it. I, don't, I try not to eat sugars. Things like that, bread, I stay away from. The, the really simple things, and it, it works out really well. What would you say to uh, the folks at Hackensack, this initiative, you're the spokesperson, how important is it? Oh, it's very important. You know, listen, you know, it, just feeling good. My gosh, that's all I think about. I get so frustrated when I don't feel good. Uh, you know, I've had a, a few ailments. You know, I've had my lower back that bothers me, so I had to get surgery a couple times. And it's just, it mentally just drags me down. But there's nothing like somewhat being in shape and leading a healthy lifestyle and just what it does for you. you, you you're friendlier, uh, you're more productive. You know, even my wife says I'm a nicer person. When I, does she? Yeah, she does. That's, that's, that was hard for her to say, but she said it a few that's times. a big benefit. It is a big benefit. Yeah, and you know what it is. There's just nothing like feeling good and leading your life that way. This program up at Hackensack, together with the Giants, what could it do? What should it be able to do for you and your colleagues at the Chamber? Well, listen, we're always all about our economic development, but more importantly, we're about a quality of life. And there's no doubt in my mind that when companies come into the region, they want to know about the quality of life in their area. They want to know about the workforce. They want to know what's... A, sta a facility like this makes a statement in the region that, that a company can locate here and they know that their employees have all kinds of opportunities to, to be well. That's a quality of life issue? I think it's a quality of life issue. They think it is too because their employees, they know their employees need to be healthy, they need to be happy, they need to have those options to take care of their family, and that's all outside of the workplace. So, so this facility means a lot more than that. I don't, I don't think people take a close enough look at that element, but for us it's real important. Describe your health then and now. It's so much better now. I, you know, before I, I was a, a spotty workout guy. I work out three days, sign up for a gym, go for the first two months like many other people, and then die off. And that just doesn't happen anymore. Now it's a, it's a commitment. Now it becomes part of a, part of your way of life. What about the nutrition part? Nutrition as well, because that's that's really important. So Dr. Farber is helping me understand what I need to eat. Better, better choices in my day-to-day -day diet. How much fluids to intake, especially for me. I need, to, I need to drink a good amount of water every day, as most people do. So now we, I monitor that. So my choices now, even when I'm now, in my particular position, I could eat out breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day with, with business. It's part meetings. of your job. It's part of the job. I have to make good choices every one of those times. Otherwise, I can't keep the weight off. Are you much more conscious because of this? Very much more conscious because, and, and you want to know what's really true? I always feel a little muscle tender because of the amount of time I work out, I like that. It reminds me that I'm making progress in my, in my physical health. I, my joints feel better. When I walk on a golf course, it feels better. You know, my swing and how I hit my golf ball, which is important to me. I love playing golf. Same here. So, and, and that is important to me. And finally, what do you say to all your colleagues who say, love to do it, don't have the time, it's not in my wheelhouse, Maybe at another time, you say. I said the same thing, and it's totally changed my life. You need to do the same thing. One of the keys to, to the game plan for health program is uh, Dr. Michael Farber, director of the Hackensack UMC executive health team. He's also, mind if I tell everyone who you're a team doctor for? Sure. If I get this wrong, you tell me. The Red Bulls, the Nets, the Devils, the New York football giants. Um, you do these health checkups, right? What are those health checkups and why are they so important? Well, health checkups are so important because um, what we can do is actually give people an indicator of where they are in their health and how healthy they are. And then from that point, how to maintain their health. So sometimes we do screening tests where we can uncover conditions like diabetes, hypertension, where they may not know they have it. 
But who are we checking on? I mean, it's one thing to check on a professional athlete, but you're talking about a lot of executives, professionals, people in corporate life. Those folks, right? Sure. This is for everyone, whether you're the housewife dealing with busy uh, kids and, and, and shuffling them back and forth, or you're the professional athlete who's in different cities several times a week. Okay. When you're doing these screenings, what are you looking for? What do you potentially find sometimes, doctor, and why is that important? Yeah. Um, what we look for is usually based upon age, um, family history, certain custom risk factors that may be to the individual, we will cater what we do to try and uncover, if any, some conditions that um, may not be readily available, uh, readily apparent to them. For example? Sure. Like um, sometimes we could do a simple thing called a hemoglobin A1C, which will detect... Hemoglobin A1C. Yes. It's a lab test. And what that does is it tells us if someone's um, got diabetes, and they may not know they have it. Uh, some symptoms sometimes could be subtle. Or we take a quick blood pressure. This is a part of routine screening for every individual. For athletes, we take it to a slightly different level just because of the risks that they may incur. What happens when you identify that? Okay, some, very often, you, believe it or not, you actually find people saying, I don't want to get tested because what happens if they find something? Well, what happens if you find it? You can deal with it, right? Well, if uh, we find a heart murmur on examination, we can do an echocardiogram right there, and from there we can get an idea of what this is. For the individual, it's important for our health. For the professional athlete, there could be a contract that depends on that later in the afternoon, so we need to know what the story is right away. If uh, you're a woman and you have an abnormal mammography, what we can do that day is ultrasound, find the needle aspiration, get to the bottom of it so you don't have to return for three or four trips, and it gives you peace of mind of understanding what's there on the same day of events. So we can plan a preventive strategy while we have you. We're here with uh, former Giant great Jeff Fiegels, who punted for the Giants from? Uh, 2003 to 2009. Now, you have dedicated your life after playing professional ball to taking care of yourself. Describe it. Well, I, I think that it, it kind of carried over from when I was done when I was playing football. For 22 years, you had to do something you know, physically and mentally. Uh, the first two years after I got done playing, I kind of took a little time off. And I realized that, you know, hey, listen, uh, it catches up to you quickly. I mean, I was in my mid-40s when I retired. And so now I realized that, you know, those couple years that I did take time off, I had to say to myself, listen, I got to get back into it. Not at a level where I you know, was doing it when I was playing football. But for the most part, it's just you have to go through your everyday routine. And I, and I think that today in the panel that the people were up here were realizing that not only is it physically, it's a mental thing. And I think that was the biggest part of me is getting mentally back in. What does that mean? Well, I think it's you, you got to want to change. you got to want to do what you're doing. Uh, there's a lot of guys that just don't want to do it. And that's where the mental aspect comes in. And I think that once you get it mentally and start to see the physical effects of how working out does and what you're doing every day, mentally you feel better about yourself. Now, you're an ambassador uh, for this program, the uh, Game Plan for Health program. What does it mean? It means that you need to understand how to put a game plan together. Just like in football, you don't just go out there one day and say, okay, this is how we're going to beat this team. You have to put together a, a plan. you got to study the effect. you got to know uh, working with people, getting together, and putting that plan together, and then executing it. That's what Hackensack does. That's what this medical and this fitness center does. They have the resources of people like coaches, like general managers in football, people that can go out and help you formulate that game plan, put it into effect, and then see the results of it. And Jeff, all those who are watching right now on public television on Fios who say, love to do it, but come on, Jeff has an advantage as a professional athlete. I don't have that advantage. You say? I say that that's wrong. I mean, there's not only from a, from a fitness perspective, not only just uh, here, but it's everywhere. You, there's gyms everywhere. There's, there's ways to get out there and do it. So, you know, get off your butt and get in, and, and get it and formulate a, your own game plan. And more importantly, if you have uh, want to do an extensive game plan, maybe this is the place you need to come. And the uh, nutrition part is important. Oh, nutrition part is that's another mental thing. Um, you got you ready to go out to eat. You know, you got to figure out where you want to go to eat because it's just hard sometimes. And then you know, eating the right way. Uh, the benefits of it are long term, and, and it takes a little bit of time to get it going. But once you once you achieve that, you will realize that it is healthier. You feel better, you look better, and you have more energy. Now, this is a guy who lives it every day. Some people talk about it, 
Mark Sparta lives it. Um, I was with Mark a little bit before he really made the commitment, but you can see now, uh, it's like before and after, man. You look great. Mark Sparta is the Executive Vice President, Population Health Officer, Hackensack University Health Network. Um, game plan health. On paper, it looks like one thing, Mark, but tell folks when you made the commitment as an executive here to change your life and to change your health, talk about how you did it and what it's done for you. Steve, it's been a wonderful journey. Uh, you know, we all reach a point uh, in our lives where we have this epiphany where you know, we don't feel well, uh, we don't necessarily like the way we look, we don't like the way our clothes fit, and we make that decision. We make that decision to change our lifestyle. We exercise, we begin to eat right, and the benefits are uh, multifold. How'd you do it? I mean, describe it, because a lot of people say, I'd like to do it, sounds great, I'm happy for Mark, I'm jealous of Mark, how? You know, it requires some discipline and some commitment, but you need to make time in your daily routine there is always time to find for your own health because the more you take care of yourself, the better you're going to be with your family, the better you're going to be with your job, and the better you're going to be with your friends. Time for what? Because it was the workout part, but you and I also had lots of offline conversations about nutrition because Mark's a very busy corporate executive, and a lot of executives we talked to say, I'd love to, don't have the time. Where'd you find the time to eat right and exercise? You know, there's always that temptation, depending upon whatever events that you're at, to have the foods that aren't necessarily good for you, but there are many foods that are good for you. You know, good balance of fruit, vegetables, um, typically soft drinks are not really good for you, so um, I, like to, I like to really make sure that I'm very well hydrated and drink a lot of water. Yeah, let's talk about the exercise. When did you fit it in? First thing in the morning, and everybody has their own sweet spot, so I need to get up early and start my day with exercise. If I don't do that, it's very hard to, to fit it in based on all the professional commitments that we have. But if I, I find if I do it first thing in the morning, it actually starts my day out well and, uh, and really gives me a jump start. Talk about your role here at Hackensack as the Chief Population Health Officer. The term population health is used by a lot of people, but it's kind of jargony. And we've talked to Bob Garrett about this, and Bob's often trying to make that term real for people population health officer means? So population health means many different things to many different people, but you know, Hackensack University Health Network, as a leader in the industry, not just providing world-class, high-quality, accessible care, but also caring for our community and making sure that our community stays well. So we intend on uh, coordinating our services better, more efficient delivery of care, and really this center, this magnificent center, the Deborah Simon Center for Integrative Medicine, recognizes the fact that care delivery is really moving away from hospitals and out into the community, and Hackensack definitely seems to want to be on the forefront of doing that. We're here joined by Lee Weiss, who's the New York football Giants physical therapist and assistant athletic trainer. You and your colleagues at the Giants, not just the players, but the executives on the Giants went through a whole regiment to find out how healthy they really are. We, health and wellness is a priority in our organization from the, from the bottom up. You know, the players, obviously, we, we take care of their medical needs, but essentially the coaches and the front office, they're all they're under our supervision as well. Our coaches every year go through an annual physical exam, um, comprehensive, you know, whether it's orthopedic exam, medical exam, lab work, EKG, echocardiogram, chest x-ray, a full comprehensive physical. Um, we do dermatological screening, you know, to try to identify melanoma and some different skin issues. Um, so we really take health and wellness seriously with the Giants, whether it's a player, a coach, uh, front office staff. Why? Well, we, we know that you know a, a healthy individual is a more productive individual, and we know um, that the NFL is, is a stressful lifestyle. Lifestyle. A lot of our coaches, um, you know, spend the whole season in sleep deprivation. They make poor nutritional choices. So, so we try to do whatever we can to help them succeed. But they're the leaders of our team. They're the ones that decide, um, you know, st strategy and tactics and game plan. And we want those people being at the top of their game at all times. In many ways, a uh a football coach, an athletic coach, is a, is a CEO in an incredibly stressful public environment. And we've seen some football coaches have some real health problems, uh, some heart-related issues, cardiac issues, that have played themselves out very publicly. Talk about Tom Coughlin, who is, I believe, in his 70s, right? And he's doing, I think he's close. close. He's doing it. Yeah. 
He's um, he may be one of the fittest people in our building. You know, he's uh, very regimented, very routine. Works out twice a day. Uh, twice. Twice a day. Watches what he eats. Um, really a model citizen in the area of health and wellness. Uh, takes really good care of his body. Is very in tune with his body. Uh, you know, is always getting flexibility training, stretching out, doing cardio, doing weight training. Uh, really attributes to, to his personality and, and how much of a leader he is, and, and not only on the football side, but also on the fitness side. What message do you think that sends to corporate executives and others who are saying, hey, that's great, but I'm not in the NFL? Yeah. I think, um, you know, corporate America can take what he does and, and kind of embody that for themselves. Um, you know, it, it's, a, it's a stressful job. He works you know, 15 to 18 hours a day sometimes, and he still finds those those opportunities to take care of his body, to eat right, to, to work out, to stretch. And I think, um, you know, he can really, uh, he can really send that message to corporate America and, and just improve overall health of, of those individuals as well. We're here with Kate McDougall, who is the operations manager of the Deborah Simon Center for Integrative Medicine at Hackensack UMC Fitness and Wellness, powered by the Giants and the Health Awareness Regional program. You've got a huge title and a big responsibility, which means? Well, it means that we've been in corporate wellness for a really long time. I came in 21 years ago as the corporate liaison. So I think what we've seen is a huge evolution in corporate wellness from simple providing education programs to now evidence-based focus programs and partnering with corporations to make healthier workplace. Let's talk about corporations. Uh, we had this panel discussion today in which we had a lot of folks in the HR community and the corporate community who wanted to find out more about how they can possibly get a healthy or, or create an environment where they can have a healthier workforce. What are some of the challenges corporations and other organizations face in trying to create an environment that's healthier for their workforce? Well, I think first and primary is the financial responsibility. What we saw here today is that there needs to be an investment, but it doesn't always have to be a high financial investment. Some of the suggestions and strategies of creating walking paths within your workplace, creating that environment where you're having group activities with employees, that's not a high cost, but it's a high yield, so that you're creating that healthier workplace, making sure your vending machines have healthy choices in them, your cafeterias are healthy choices and get some of those high fat foods out of there. Talk about some of the quote unquote ROI, return on investments, of creating an environment that's more conducive to your employees being healthier, to whether it's a fitness center or, or promoting them going to a fitness center and creating healthier choices in terms of nutrition. What's the ROI? Well, the ROI is not only a financial ROI, but it's also a quality of life one. When you empower the employees to take care of themselves by exercising, nutrition, and integrating those behaviors into their lifestyle, you're creating not only a healthier employee who is more present in the job, you're also training the trainer and having them take the information home and creating healthier families as well. Is that a hard sell? Um, I think sometimes it's a challenging sell. I won't say hard because it's doable. I think it's just a matter of how it's presented. The other thing is uh, one size doesn't fit all. You have to have a lot of flexibility and maybe one person likes to walk, the other person likes to lift weights, um, another person wants to meditate, another person wants to do yoga. You have to have plan A through Z and then mix it up as you're going. We are honored to be joined by Leslie Edelman Banks, managing partner, Hackensack UMC Fitness and Wellness, powered by the Giants. Uh, together with, I'm sorry, what's this gentleman's name? Bart. Bart. Bart, and your last name would be Oates. Oates, that's correct. Thank Bart Oates, the great uh, Bart Oates, who is uh, well known to everybody, not just in the tri state region, but around the country. New York uh, football giant, great uh, all star, won a couple of uh, Super Bowls. Before we talk to him about the fact that he stays in great shape, talk about this place and why it's special. Well, we're really excited to be here. We were able to team up with Hackensack UMC and the powerful New York Giants to bring health and wellness to this entire community. We reach pretty far out into Bergen County and we bring people in not just to exercise and take care of themselves, but really it's a whole health and wellness experience. So people come in and we create awareness. People that have never exercised before, but they know it's, it's good for them and they need to get going. They come in, they see our nurse, we go through a health risk assessment, we take measurements, body fat, we find out about their, their history, their health history, and then we make sure we put them on the right road to fitness and wellness. So from there, they see our trainer, they go through a whole functional movement. The whole routine, thing. 
the whole thing, the whole shebang, because really it's about success and people coming away saying, I feel better, I'm more aware, I'm bringing this into my lifestyle. So it's about exercise, it's about eating right, it's about, it's about moderation and realizing everybody can do it. There's really something for everybody. I say this to Bart all the time, and you can share with our audience, you've made a commitment to wellness, to fitness. Um, it's been a part of your life since you retired from football. You, you actually said in front of the audience earlier in the panel discussion, it was no choice for you. It was something you knew you had to do. I mean, you know, so you, you spent my professional career as a professional, you know, 14 years playing professional football. And, you know, it's, it's you're working out, you're working out for a specific purpose. And it's really kind of, you know, you've, but I really learned about wellness. It was afterwards, you know, because we're so specific with that. And so... I retired and started working out and, you know, but learned, you know, what it really meant, you know, as far as the program and, you know, conditioning from a cardiovascular standpoint, not sports specific, if you will. It's more of health specific. And so um, it was just something I just kind of evolved into and have been doing and it's just part of my lifestyle. What has it done for your life, for your relationship with your family and frankly, just being overall more productive and healthy. I think it's with anybody will tell you that has committed themselves to it that it's it really is part of who you are, and it does like you not said, not just a thing you do. No, no, because it's it, it does it affects everything. It affects your your mental process. It, it's a quality of life thing, and so I mean that's my biggest. I mean, the years of playing football, 14 seasons, um, it had an adverse effect on my body. You know, I didn't really feel it initially, but. Now that I'm in my 50s, you know, I'm starting to feel it. And, and I know if I want the quality of life as I get older to maintain and be able to do what I want to do and, and you know, pick up my grandkids and, you know, play with them. That, and I'm a new grandpa. It's a big deal. Congratulations. <laughs> that I've got a, you know, I've got a responsibility to stay in shape. And, and you know, I've got to take care of that. It's not going to be, it's not somebody else's responsibility. That's me. And so it's a commitment I made. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Wells Fargo, United Water, Bergen Community College, the Mental Health Association in New Jersey, Qualcare Inc., the New Jersey Education Association, and by Kessler Foundation. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Each year, Americans fill 4 billion prescriptions, but as much as one-third of that medication will never be used. Some of this waste ends up in the rivers, lakes, and streams that make up our drinking water supply. The United Water Foundation and the National Community Pharmacists Association have partnered to bring you a simple solution. Dispose your meds responsibly. Go to DisposeMyMeds.org to find a participating pharmacy and to learn more. A public service message from the United Water Foundation and NCPA.